Hey, my friends, thank you so much for joining us this day for our series of spiritual discernment, What's Next? As you know, we've been talking about what's next as it relates to others. Uh, last week, we talked about what's next as it relates to transition. And this week, I invite you to sit up and listen because we're saying what's next as it relates to when people walk away. So stay tuned. Hope this sermon really empowers you and gives you something to think about on what's next when people walk away. Amen. To God be the glory. Great things God has done, is doing, and promises to do in this place. How many of you really love the Lord? If so, how about putting a hand clap there in the chat box or an emoji of excitement because of God's love for us. Matter of fact, the Bible said God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. And in so doing, we've come to worship on this third Sunday in July. A God who loves and a God who cares, and most importantly, a God who is present with us. Pray with me. Lord, we thank you so much for the love that overflows, for the spirit of worship. We thank you, God, though it's, it's connected through a screen this Sunday morning, we know your Holy Spirit is really what holds us together. So now, God, have your way, we pray. As we've already heard prayers and songs, we've already lifted up the presence of children. But God, we pray now that you will give a word for all generations. Thank you, God, for what you've already told me to say, but I want to say what you've placed in the hearts to be received by your children. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our most blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. For the love of Almighty God and for the spirit of Jesus Christ, 
we say we love you. Welcome to this portion of our service as we continue to thank God for who God is. Thank you, Dr. Monroe and Brother L. Thank you, Brother David. Brother George on the saxophone, we thank God for our AV ministry, for those who make this a wonderful way to worship God. If you have your word this morning, I invite you to turn to the gospel of John, John chapter 6, and we'll be reading verses 60 through 67 from a New Living Translation. That is John chapter 6, as we read verses 60 through verse 67 from a New Living Translation of God's Holy Word. Let us read the word together. Now, many of his disciples said, this is very hard to understand. How can anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining. So he said to them, does this offend you? Then what will you think if you see the Son of Man ascend to heaven again? The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But some of you do not believe me. But Jesus knew from the beginning which ones didn't believe, and he knew who would betray him. Then he said, this is why I said that people can't come to me unless the Father gives them to me. At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Then Jesus turned to the twelve and asked, Are you also going to leave? Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And for those who have been following us and those who may be joining in today for the first time, I would like to give a recap, shall we say, of the theological theme to which we are preaching this month, which is simply called spiritual this sermon. And as we discuss this sermon for the Christian context, it describes a process of determining God's desire in a situation for one's life. Spiritual discernment helps you make the right decisions at the right time with the right people spending the right amount of money on the right things for the right purpose. In essence, spiritual discernment really leads us to making right decisions. And our subject, or shall we say our proposition for this sermon series, is a question that simply says, what's next? And in part one of this series, if you remember this to recapitulate, we simply raised the question, what's next as it relates to others? What's next as it relates to serving others, ministering with others, being in community with others, and accepting others, particularly as we prepare to re-enter this building, come back to the campus, and to share ministry in a post quarantine church part two of the series raised the question what's next as it related to transition we preached on it last week for our question last week was what's next for the transitions in your life what's next for the transitions in your home transitions on your job transitions in relationships and again transitions in life or how do you move from this to that from here to there and and what does God say about transitions in our lives we raise the question what's next in relation to the transitions that God is making and what God will do in this ministry in 2021 and beyond and today, y'all, we launch part three of this series, and I invite you to hear the text one more time as it speaks to a question of devotion, and it pushes what I believe the ultimate issue about staying the course. For John chapter 6, verse 66 and 67 says, at this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Then Jesus came to the twelve and asked, are you going to leave? 
And with the with this scripture uh, as our backdrop, I, I want y'all to pray with me as we preach from our subject. What's next when people walk away? When people walk away. Church, I have discovered that Sometimes things happen beyond our control and sometimes things occur without us co-signing and sometimes things take place not like we have planned and sometimes events unfold when we least expect them. I've discovered, y'all, that sometimes you don't get an A no matter how hard you study, and sometimes you don't get recognized even though you do most of the work. And sometimes you have more month than you have money, and sometimes you are dismissed and overlooked simply because of ignorance and prejudice. And at the onset of this sermon, I, I want you please to hear my proposition for it's simple because things happen sometimes beyond our control, y'all. And things occur without us co-signing. Things take place not like we have planned and events unfold when we least expect them. Can I push it and go on? Because you see, for how many times have you planned for an outside affair and then it rained or you plan for a small group for dinner and then your cousins and all their friends show up or or you thought you were going to have some extra money from your paycheck to put aside but then the washing machine stops working then the hot water heater starts leaking then the freezer stops freezing and then the dog gets worms then the brakes start squeaking and then your cell phone start dropping calls then your tags expire not to mention while you were getting an inspection they told you you needed four new tires for how many times y'all have you planned to go somewhere only to be detoured by construction or how many times have you planned to leave work early only only to be pulled into a meeting that really didn't need to be had or you were just about finished with the application only to find that they've already selected a candidate or you had been set up for a medal only to be told you were disqualified am I talking to somebody this Sunday morning because I've come to the conclusion y'all that sometimes things happen beyond our control and sometimes things occur without our co-signing and sometimes things take place not like we have planned and sometimes events unfold when we least expect them and even as it relates to our faith walk and even as it impacts our spiritual journey I have discovered C. N. Jenkins that sometimes my Christian friends people will walk away let me say that again I have discovered as the pastor of this congregation for 29 years and as an ordained minister for 33 years I have discovered y'all regardless of how good God has been to people and regardless of how God has opened up doors that no man can open and close doors that no man can unlock I did discover y'all that people will walk away that's right, they will walk away from their faith, they will walk away from their family, they will walk away from their job, they will walk away from their joy, they will walk away from relationships, and some even walk away from re. I have discovered they will walk away from healthy situations and some will walk into conditions of despair. I, I can't explain it, y'all, nor can I justify why I dare not speculate their motivation, nor do I instigate their rationale. I just know that sometimes people will walk away. 
And please hear me with compassion today because I don't want to be insensitive to anyone this Sunday morning by bringing up the subject of folk walking away if that was painful or hurtful to you. I'm just lifting up the issue as one to be addressed by scripture and identifying the topic as one to be dealt with through the theme of this month's spiritual discernment on today's subject, which is simply entitled, What's Next When People Walk Away? And I don't know, my friends, who this sermon is written for. I just believe that it is addressed to somebody praying for answers and it's directed to somebody looking for closure deeply embedded on the subject when people walk away. And if you are in the chat box right now you know what I'm talking about give me an amen if you can just help me preach what do you do next when people walk away for you see this issue this morning comes across in the text of the holy bible for it's an issue that happens beyond our control an issue that occurs without our co-signing an issue that takes place when we have planned something differently and an issue that unfolds in at least y'all you know, when we least expect it the question for the day again is what do you do or in particular what do you respond? How do you respond when people walk away? Let's go to the text because by this time in Jesus' ministry, Jesus' disciples have numbered tens of thousands and at least a hundred of these tens of thousands were so devoted to Jesus, they would have indeed started an army of revolt to lift him up as an earthly king. But as stated in the commentary of Pastor Chuck Swindoll, he writes that Jesus knew that many in the multitude, he knew that they had fickle devotion. Fick, fickle devotion that sprouts up quickly and withers suddenly in the heat. Let me just hang out there for a little bit and talk about fickle devotion. Fickle devotion that shows up when you're talking about blessings but runs when you start talking about bearing one's burdens. Fickle devotions that is people who are hungry to hear about prosperity but they become death when you tell them you got to give to others before you take for yourself. Fickle devotion that is the folk who holler on Palm Sunday go Jesus go Jesus go but on Good Friday they holler crucify him. Fickle devotion you know what I'm saying when things are running good for you in the church everything is fine but when somebody rubs you the wrong way or votes down your motion or causes you to stumble you fickle devotion and you running from this church to that church and this woman to that woman and this man oh yes I said it fickle devotion never satisfied with where you are and the Bible says that you can't serve God with fickle devotion. Let me get back to the text because fickle disciples are described and if the Greek word of skikolos, skikolos simply means dry, hard, and rough. Figuratively speaking, Jesus is describing uh, the devotion of these individuals or they're talking about their devotion to God as being something that is hard. They describe Jesus' teachings as challenging. But now, if the truth be told, my friends, Jesus' teaching was not hard or difficult to understand. It's just difficult to accept. Let me say that again. The teachings of Jesus, Dr. Monroe, are not hard to understand. They're just difficult to accept. And somebody watching this Sunday morning needs to hear this message because it wasn't difficult to understand that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. But you see, it was difficult back then to accept the fact that you were supposed to pray for folk who set you up for failure. It was not 
difficult to understand that Jesus says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. That was not hard to understand, but it was difficult to accept, my friends, that you were supposed to forgive folks 70 times 7 when they sinned against you. It was not difficult to understand that Jesus says, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. But back then, it was difficult to accept the fact that the, even though you had served the Lord from a young age and been there in the morning as Jesus talks about that parable of the servants in the vineyard, that God is going to reward the joker who shows up at the last hour, at the last minute, and give him the same grace that you get even though you've been on the Lord's track for a long Can I get somebody to help me preach right there? You can't have fickle devotion and say, I understand, but don't accept the word. The word says, love your enemies. The word says, pray for those who use you. The word says, turn the other cheek. Now, don't get beat down for stupidity, but you got to turn the other cheek and let people know the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. Oh, Jesus teaching y'all wasn't difficult to understand. It's just difficult to accept. And my first point in this text, y'all, I want you to hear me this Sunday morning, is that Jesus was saying basically people walk away because they don't want to accept what is being asked of them. People walk away from the church. They walk away from family. They walk away from the job. They walk away because of commitments that they don't want to accept. And I need to talk to somebody. Don't walk away from your marriage when your marriage is asking you to commit to a process. Don't walk away from, from, from a job when your job is simply asking you to show up and do your best. Don't walk away from your program. You said in January 1 you was going to lose weight but you ain't lost nail pound you got you didn't get COVID-19 you got COVID-39 wrapped around you and you need to get back on track and lose the weight you got to have commitment to finish the task finish school finish job finish the book whatever it is don't walk away from that because God has placed too much in you and on you for you to walk away let me see if I can say this way. I love the way that, that, that Professor Nicole Hannah Jones walked away last week as you heard me talk about. She left the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and she went to Howard University to lead a journalism program. And I got to give the shout out because what Professor Nicole Hannah Jones taught me y'all is don't stay where you are tolerated. Go where you can be celebrated. Can I get an amen men right there that somebody needs to say Reverend that's my word that's my calling card that's my tweet for the week don't stay where I am tolerated go where I can be celebrated and I want somebody to know that God has brought you out of sin so let's celebrate God has brought you out of mire so let's celebrate God has brought you from being low to being in a position of authority let's celebrate it God has brought you from confusion to comfort let's celebrate God has brought you from being broke to being a blessing. Will you give God praise right now, right where you are, for being not just tolerated, but celebrated? Oh, the good news, the good news, y'all, is the second reason that people walk away. Here it is. It's because people walk away because they have been offended. And you see, that may be true, but that is not of God. Jesus is saying to his disciples, look, my friends, I've come from heaven. I've come from a, from a, from a divine birth. And, and the people are so upset because they remember where Jesus came from. He was from Nazareth. They remember where Jesus had lived and worked. He worked around Capernaum. They, had, they remember how Jesus walked on the earthly, this earthly uh, plane, but they didn't understand his divine appointment. Somebody watching right now, 
Don't get offended because somebody else has a divine appointment on their life that they are living out. Don't get offended because somebody else is walking in the path where God wants them to walk. Don't get offended, my friends, because somebody else finds themselves walking away from you. Yes, if you're going to be great, you got to leave some good people. If you're going to be great, you got to leave a good situation. If you're going to be great, you got to cut the good people off in order to get some great people in your life. Okay, let me see if I can give confessions good for the soul. I, I told Pastor Lanson when I had my birthday to, uh, two weeks ago is that I'm going to get 30 people under the age of 30 to be on my direct dial list. Why? Because I need some young people in my life. Now, if you're over 30 and you know you got direct dial on my phone, don't be offended if you get bumped off. I just need to intentionally be around some 30-year or younger folk. Is there anybody here want to have some young friends in your life? Anybody here want to have some young folk who can, who can, in essence, just fix your telephone when it breaks down? And, in essence, fix your computer. Now, I ain't getting friends to use them and abuse them, but I just want to be connected. I don't want to get so stuck in my way, so stuck back in the 50s and the 60s that I forget that life moves on. Everything in front of me that I desire is there, not anything behind me. Let me move quickly because I want you to recognize how important to remember where you come from because when you remember where you come from, you will know where you are going. Is that not the case, my friends, of none other than Sarita Maria Taylor, Sarita, I mean Suzette Maria Taylor from Afreda, Georgia, Suzette Maria Taylor. You just might know Maria Taylor. She is that anchor woman, y'all, that sideline reporter at the NBA Finals right now, a graduate of the University of Georgia who played volleyball on scholarship, but she went into broadcasting. She looked at Robin Roberts. She says, that is the epitome where I want to be. But now, as she's rising up to be a phenomenal reporter, a phenomenal anchor woman. Here Suzette Maria Taylor gives us some inspiration. She was invited last year, y'all, to give the commencement speak at the University of Georgia and she says, here it is about 10 years after graduating, I'm now standing giving a word of inspiration to new graduates. Here's what Maria Taylor says. She says, it was one of the highest honors of my life for I'm standing on a stage, standing in a it's in, a, in an arena standing at a place where my grandmama could not even take a step on the campus of the University of Georgia. You missing that. She says, here I am standing talking to graduates where my own grandmama, because of the color of her skin, could not even step on this campus. And what Maria Taylor helps me understand is y'all, you have to sometimes walk away to get your soul back, but walk back to that place to remind others where they have come from. Is there anybody watching right now who can thank God that you walked away from some mess because you needed a miracle? Is there anybody right now who can give God praise that you had to walk away from some foolishness so you can get your mind right? Is there anybody right now who will help me preach this thing that you have walked away but now you're walking back to tell somebody, look at me, I'm a child of God. Look at me, I'm redeemed and saved. Look at me God can do anything but fail the good news the good news y'all is that people will walk away but finally I understand that people will walk away sometimes here it is because they were never sent okay all right P people will walk away because they were never sent Sent. You're looking at me funny, so I've got to go to the text because the text is tailored to teach us that people will walk away, y'all, because they were never sent. The New Living Translation, verse 65, says, Then he said, This is why I said that people can't come to me unless the Father gives them to me. From the NIV translation, verse 65 says, he went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father enables him. And here's the news flash I want to give to somebody. Sometimes when people walk away, it's because they were never sent. Okay? Sometimes when people walk away, it's because they were never sent. 
So stop trying to hold on to people in your life who were never sent. Some people come to your life for a season, not for eternity. Stop trying to make seasonal folk lifelong friends and stop abusing lifelong friends and treating them as seasonal. Stop trying to be God over the people who come in your life. Sometimes you have to say hello, bye-bye, see you later. Sometimes you have to say may the doorknob hit you. Well, sometimes you just have to say so long, I love you, but you are not good. Walk away I love the way love the way the Bishop Jake says he says it basically like this is that you have to recognize that your destiny never lies in the people who walk away when people walk away from your life God is opening up a door for missions and ministry and miracles to come in when people walk away God is setting you up for something greater okay you didn't get that I like the way Denzel Washington says Denzel says when Sometimes people walk out of your life. You have to walk up to them and say, thank you. Okay, okay. If you don't like Bishop, you don't like Denzel, how about Medea? Medea says it like this. When people walk away, sure enough, she says, let them go. Let some people go in your life who are not sent to you because if they're not sent to you, they're not good for you. My friends, your destiny, your core, your purpose, your future is always wrapped up in God, not in people. My friends, your comfort, your peace, your joy, your fulfillment, are always connected to the power of God. You see, when you walk with Jesus, he will be an advocate for your adversary. When you walk with Jesus, he's a builder for the broken. He's a comfort in your crisis. He's the deliverer for the downtrodden. He's the exalter for the excuse maker. He's a forgiver for the failure. He's grace for those who've gone too far. He's help for the hurting. He's inspiration for the ignored. He's joy for the jealous. He's kindness for the kick to the curb. He's love for the lost. He's mercy for your mistakes. He's a necessity for the needy. He's an opportunity for the oppressed and he's praise for your problem when you walk with him when you talk with him when you let him guide your steps there's no need for you to say what's next you will be able to say that I love the Lord because he walks with me I love the Lord because he helps me I love the Lord because he is the one in my life walk in the light the beautiful light the beautiful light of almighty God shine all around me by day and by night night Jesus is the light of the world oh the good news friends is the answer to what's next is a closer walk with the Lord the answer to what's next is the not for you to hold on to things of the past but to walk forward with God in your future do you know that every innovation has an expiration every beginning has an end there's seasons that come and seasons go, and I want somebody to be liberated this Sunday morning and know that God is speaking to you, and God is inviting you to walk with him. Pray with me, Lord God, we thank you that you've given us a word, you've given us hope, you've given us inspiration. God, and I thank you now that on this day, this Sabbath day, you're able to walk with us. You're talking to us. And you helping us see that we're not alone. God, I pray for the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, the couple, the family. God, I pray for those who are watching and listening that they will indeed see that some things that, that happen in our lives are just not sent. So no need for us to hold on to them. Let us release and let go. We thank you, God, for this word. But we thank you most importantly for your Holy Spirit. We ask that it would have its way in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us for our worship service today. And I hope that this sermon, What's Next, When People Walked Away, was indeed helpful to you and for you. And don't forget that sometimes people walk away because they just cannot accept the responsibility. They also walk away because they've been offended. And I hope that none of you have watched today have offended somebody else to walk out of your life. And the other thing, as the scripture tells us, is that sometimes people walk away because they have not been sent. Y'all, I've always wanted you to know, never stay where you are tolerated, but go where you can be celebrated. 
So this is what this sermon series is about. Spiritual discernment, making good decisions that will help you and those around you live more faithfully to Almighty God. This is Pastor Cannon. Thank you so much for watching today and worshiping with us. Please share, subscribe, let this message be a blessing to somebody in your circle. Y'all have a wonderful Sabbath. Joy. Looking forward to worshiping you on another Sunday. Y'all have a great day.